The first inning is unpredictable, but you can place a no-run first inning wager with confidence at BetMGM. Make a no-run first inning prop bet on any Friday Major League Baseball game. If only one run is scored in the first, you'll get your stake back in bonus bets up to $20. Take big swings all season long with BetMGM, the king of sports books, and an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Log into your account or sign up to BetMGM today. BetMGM and GameSense remind you to play responsibly and offer resources to help you make appropriate choices. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Kansas only. New and existing customer offer. Opt-in required. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets. Bonus bets expire seven days from issuance. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Welcome back into Sports Daily, everybody. Hour number two is here. Jacob Albrock, Tommy Caster with you. Jad Chambers producing, giving away movie tickets, having some fun here on a Friday. We'll get you ready for the weekend as we make our way through and let you know what's on tap today. Uh, One of the more interesting stories of the morning is Adam Schefter reports that Tom Brady is in discussions to become a limited partner of the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, potentially his second foray. Schefter says, into a partnership with Mark Davis on a professional sports franchise in less than two months. Um, I don't know what to make of this report. I've told you that I think at some point contracts uh, for star players are going to include some sort of stake in the team. Patrick Mahomes is the guy that uh, comes to the front of our minds for very obvious reasons. But Tom Brady doesn't have anything to do with the Raiders, never has. Um, I mean, but I think that he's a businessman and probably Tommy, this is just like a business decision, a business thing. What I think is interesting though, is I wonder about the big fat broadcasting deal he has with Fox and, you know, are these things going to still be allowed? If you, I I mean, I don't see any issue with it. I don't think, I think you could easily split those two things together you know, a part if you're Brady, but, you know, I think the obvious thing people are thinking about is, well, was he opening the door to maybe playing again and poor Jimmy Garoppolo and like all these things. But I, I mean, Josh McDaniels is there, so I don't know. Like, I don't want to say never or no, that's crazy. Cause it might not be. I, I think he's probably just making a business decision here. Uh, we know that he had interest in something like this in Miami, but in Miami, we heard it was to also play. So I don't know. When I first heard about this and the report came out from Adam Schefter this morning, my immediate gut reaction was we're literally never going to get rid of this guy. Like that was my first immediate thought. Here we go. Never going to get rid of Tom Brady uh, one way or another. Either he's playing, get rid either he's of broadcasting, him. either he is, you know, or he's, he's owning. Like it's one of, one of those three things. It's not that I, I want to get rid of him. It's just that like, We've we've seen him for so long. Like, can you go away for a little while? That just kind of burn out on Tom Brady. Uh, that's just me, though. I, I might be in the minority uh, for that. Uh, fine. If he wants to be a part owner of the Raiders, that's great. Of course, I hate the Raiders, so that would give me a reason to hate Tom Brady even more, I guess. I don't know. Uh, if he wants to be a part owner, that's cool. Um, but I feel bad for Jimmy Garoppolo because if this ends up happening, then of course you're going to hear a ton of speculation that he's going to play. What happens if the Raiders don't do particularly well and Garoppolo struggles and Tom Brady just happens to be part owner of the team? Could he come down from the owner's booth and play like all of these different scenarios come into play now? And I'm just exhausted from hearing about it. As far as the broadcasting piece, by the way, he's never going to be a broadcaster. He's I'm we're never going to see him what? be in the booth in Fox. It's just not going to happen. There's he's been walking away from $40 million. Sure he is. Sure he is. He doesn't want to be a broadcaster. So I think that he accepted this money. If he wanted to be a broadcaster, he'd be training for it and he'd be getting ready to do it this upcoming season, but he's not. So I think it's going to be unlikely if we ever see him broadcast. I don't agree with that. Um, I think that, Tom Brady, Tom Brady will need to prepare and train, yes. But does he, like, is he, Tom Brady is going to be really good at that. He is funny. Uh, he's smart. He clearly is comfortable, you know, with a camera or a microphone. 
he, I, I don't know why he would walk away from $40 million. Like it's, you know, there, and, and what's interesting about, I think there are like two jobs we'd all like to have, right? Either one of those. Either one of those jobs would be like every every guy's every football fan's dream job. You want to own a team, number one, uh, and number two, you want to like be able to be in that booth like that. So I, I I don't I don't know why he wouldn't do it. Like with that kind of money at stake, like why not just go do it? Um, you know, ownership. Like Tom Brady's rich. Tom Brady's not being an NFL owner rich. Nobody is right. Like these guys are. Billion, billion, billionaires. Tom Brady's not that. So getting involved with the Raiders makes some sense. I think it makes, you know, very obvious sense from the Raiders standpoint. I mean, if you're Brady too, like you got to imagine the possibilities of his other businesses, right? And and what that might do for them. I think this is still only business at this point. And I think it's probably just an investment. I think Mark Davis is like, yeah, why wouldn't I want Tom Brady involved? I don't think, and, and, you know, we're some of our viewers right now, our listeners point out like, and and I think that that's right too. I don't think you can be a player and an owner. I think you would have to, but I don't know if like investing is the same thing. Like, I don't know, because remember that Miami report, like that was a part of his contract was, and maybe it was after he was done playing, but I don't, Number one, I don't know the relationship between Tom Brady and Jimmy Garoppolo and if that's amicable at all. I assume it probably is, right? Like, did Jimmy Garoppolo really sit there and think Tom Brady was not deserving of being the starter in New England for all those years? I imagine those guys spent a lot of time together. I imagine they're, you know, they're fine. But I would think this makes it more likely if he's going to step in and, like, owner right now, ownership role, that he's probably, probably really is done playing. I don't think Tom Brady's going to play again. I don't think he's going to play again. Is there some scenario where they're kind of good and Garoppolo gets hurt late and maybe he could come off this? Maybe, but man, coming off the street as an NFL player doesn't seem like something that is humanly possible, even for the guy who does things that don't seem are humanly possible all the time. I think this is probably just a business decision. I think it's something to do while he has this gap year before broadcasting, and we'll see. I, I, I just... It's interesting, but I don't think there's ulterior motives here, I guess. I'm not sure if there's ulterior motives as much as, you know, I think that he is looking for what his next step after playing will be. And I'm not convinced that it's broadcasting. I know that he signed a deal, but there have been ample opportunities ever since he left the game to, you know, be able to introduce himself to the Fox crowd. The you know Fox Network had the Super Bowl this year, and they could have used Tom Brady. There could have been a deal where Tom Brady could have been playing. on the Super Bowl broadcast. Yeah, that would have been. He wasn't weird. playing in the he, Super Bowl at that point. But he wasn't about? retired though. Like he wasn't retired yet. That would be. But they weird. had already announced a deal that he would go. He would be joining Fox. That was I, that happened before he even but, retired. I understand, but he wasn't retired yet by the time the Super Bowl came around. That would be a little strange. Uh, and, and at that point, I don't think he knew if he was going to retire still. So, uh, and everybody like, everyone's like, oh, well, Greg Olson's really good. Like Fox, Fox doesn't want Brady. They've got Greg Olson. I think Greg Olson's good too. Everybody also thought Tony Romo was God's gift to broadcasting. And now they've turned on him. It happens to every broadcaster, especially every color guy, right? They're going to turn on Greg Olson at some point. If you're Fox and you like Tom Brady's going to be a part of anything you do. You do it. They were willing to pay him forty million before. That does like why wouldn't they be now? You know, I I just I think that I hope he goes to the booth because I want to see it. Uh, Curtis doesn't agree with me on Twitter. He says uh, Tom Brady is to funny as Paul Savage is to rational. I don't know why Paul Savage had to get you know in the crosshairs of of that. Basically, Curtis saying Tom Brady's not funny. I disagree. I think he's very funny. I think sometimes his uh, quick reactions on social media and the way he can so easily mess with people is funny and I think he'll be good in the booth I I just do I I've listened uh because we have had you know Sunday night football broadcast on KFH forever right years and years and years and I'm in my car a lot for those um for whatever reason and I listened to Brady on those deals with Jim Gray and he's good like he's he's gonna be fine he's gonna be a good broadcaster and I think he is gonna be a broadcaster I think he's just making an investment. I don't think we need to read too much into this yet. 
Do you ever think Tom Brady is going to play NFL football again, Tom? Um, I wouldn't put it past him. I don't think like I, I'm not sure I would put money on it that he would play again, but nothing would surprise me. I mean, this is the same guy that retired and then unretired, right? So I yeah. wouldn't put anything past him. Um, you know, th- there could be a scenario where, you know, and I don't know if it would be, you know, as part owner of the Raiders or how that would all line out, but you know, that competitive fire, that competitive juice that has, you know, propelled Brady's career for over 20 years, that's not going to go away quietly, right? That's a huge reason why he returned to the Bucks last season. So I wouldn't put anything past him. I'm not sure I would bet on it, but it wouldn't be shocking to me if we see him on the NFL field again. I, I would put money that he's not. I think he's done. I, I, I think he's done. I, I don't think he'll be back. Um, and I, I'm fine if he comes back because I'm just so like fascinated by a guy at his age playing NFL football. So I'm here for it. Like If he wants to come back and see if he's still got something left in the tank, bring it. Uh, speaking of having something left in the tank, Tommy, and I mentioned this earlier, let's look at the Jets' schedule. I want to look at the Jets' schedule, knowing Aaron Rodgers is there, and let's just take a stab at you know, what their record might be. Um, how many winnable games do we see here on this schedule? They open with a pretty tough grind. They open on Monday Night Football at home against Buffalo. But are we ready to say the Jets, even at home against Buffalo, are we ready to potentially call that a win for them? We're just going to quickly go down the list. Um, I'm I'm ready to say that I think that they can win that game for sure. I, I, okay. I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, Aaron Rodgers' big debut in a Jets uniform with the young talent around him, if that turns into a win in week one. All right. So we'll, we'll be gracious there and say one and oh, what about at Dallas? I think they can win that game too. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not convinced as to, you know, how the, the Cowboys offense will look this year without Kellen Moore, without Zeke Elliott, um, without a, a lot of weapons on that offense. You know better than I do. They don't have a lot of weapons uh, offensively. So I, I'm, I think I'm comfortable saying 2-0 and for the Jets there. That's interesting. By the way, they're one and a half point early line went over to bed MGM and just checked. One and a half point dogs at home against Buffalo. So it's close. Uh, okay, back home against New England. I agree. I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm going to have them one and one through those first two games. Somehow they might even be zero and two. But okay, New England. I think we'll both call a win. Obviously, yes. Yeah. No, I agree. I I didn't know you were asking me. Yeah, I think that's Sorry. for sure going to be a win. Yeah. Chiefs a loss. Um, yep. Even at home, we'll still call Broncos. Even at Denver is a win. At home against Philadelphia. I like Philly. Give me Philly on the road. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to take them to win. All right. So that's your first loss for them. So you have them starting five and one. I'll have them starting. No, I've got I've two. got the Chiefs winning. I, I think so. The, they've got two right. losses at that point. Two. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked at that yeah. wrong. So I've got them with three losses. You've got them with two through the first six games. So you got them four and two. I've got them three and three. Um, then they get a bye at the Giants. I think they win that game. Okay, I do too. Uh, Chargers at home. Um, man, I, this could be a year that Justin Herbert takes a big step forward. That being said, though, I'll take the Jets. Now I'm going to take the Chargers. So I've got them at four and four, right? And you've got them at six, six and, two. and two. Okay. At the Raiders, we'll both give them a win. I've got them five yep. and four. You've got them seven and two. At Buffalo, both a loss there, I assume. Yeah, the Bills should win that game at home. All right, so you've got them, uh, what, seven and three, and I've got them six yep. and four. Um, then we go Dolphins at home. I'm going to give them a win there. I'll give them a win, too. Okay. Falcons, a win. Texans, yep. a win. I know we'll agree on that at the Dolphins. I think they win on the I think they're better, objectively better than the Dolphins are. I think that they, they go the two and oh against Miami. I think it's hard for cold weather teams to go down to Miami. I'm going to give Miami the win there. At home against Washington, I'll give them a win. I assume you will too. At Cleveland, yep. I think we'll both give them a win. And at New England, we'll both give them a win. So that puts me at what? Uh, five, six losses and you at four? Um, I, I think that 
And the reason I went through this is I, I've seen a lot of people like panicking about the beginning of that schedule where Dallas, Buffalo, and Kansas City sit in the first game, and people are like, what if they end up one and three? And even if that happens, I, I absolutely think that this is a playoff team. Um, like, Because what's a playoff team going to have to be, right? 11 and six? And I think, I think so, you know, yeah. And that and that is a very reasonable, as I look at the schedule, possibility for a team that was. I mean, what were they last year? They were almost that anyway. They they were pretty good right. last year, right? So now they add Aaron Rodgers. I think you know that definitely puts it up there into the realm. They could have of easily been a playoff team last year had Brees Hall I mean. not gotten hurt. But that's a good point. That's a good point, and we don't know how quickly and how you know at, at what capacity Brees Hall immediately returns, but. I think it's right there for the Jets. I think this schedule is fine, and we knew the schedule. Like it's not like that we just learned the schedule. We already knew what they had on the on the plate, but it's the first time we get a chance to just really look at it. Jason on our video stream chimes in on YouTube and says, "So glad the Chiefs got the Jets early in this in in the season. They'll have initial growing pains and and will be much stronger late in the year." I don't know. I think that's possible. I definitely think they'll be stronger late in the year. I, I don't know how to guess at how quickly Aaron Rodgers will get acclimated. I think it's going to happen pretty quickly because Hackett's there, uh, Lazard is there, and and I don't think Randall Cobb's going to be a much much of a factor on the field at any point this year. But I think it'll. I think what will give them an advantage late, and this is why it's one of the one of the you know the destinations that made a lot of sense for me. Is because Aaron Rodgers will have a chance to be a cold weather quarterback again, where he's been as good as anybody we've ever seen. That's where I think their advantage comes, is because they become such a great cold weather team late in the year when it counts. And if they can get to the postseason, Tommy, is there enough here? And it goes back to the question. The ultimate question is can the Jets win a Super Bowl? I mean, that's what matters, right? That's right. That's the only reason that's why Rodgers they brought him. there. That's exactly. literally the objective. Yep. So if we've established we both think they can get to the playoffs. Now it becomes, can they win a Super Bowl? We're guessing at this point. Like, we got to see him play to make an educated guess on that. But I think the opportunity will be there for them, and there we go, right? Uh, Jason asks us who we think will win the AFC East. I think the Jets will be in the mix. I think it's Jets and Buffalo. I'll, I'm still going to nod to Buffalo because we've seen it before. And consistency at head coach and quarterback matters in this league. Uh, but I do think the Jets, I'll put them ahead of Miami, even right out of the gates. I love the back half of the Jets schedule. Um, you know, as, as we went through that game by game, I think I had them at four and two. And then at that point, you know, after the first six games, I think I only had them losing one or two games for the remainder of their season. So I love the back half of the Jets schedule. I think that they're better than Buffalo on paper. I really do. Uh, I, I They needed a quarterback. That was literally what was lacking for them last season they get a healthy Brees Hall back they've reloaded up on offensive weapons at wide receiver and of course Aaron Rodgers is supremely motivated to go and win a Super Bowl with the Jets that's why he's there that's why he didn't retire um I I, I like them to win that division yeah I I'm not gonna put him ahead of Buffalo I I think Buffalo I, I think people are panicking and overreacting to Buffalo just ask it this way, like if the Chiefs weren't in their dynasty, would Buffalo like if the if the if you took the Chiefs away, do you think Buffalo would have a Super Bowl by now? Well, yeah, I mean, because I mean, think about it this way: Buffalo was 13 seconds away from going to the Super Bowl had it not been for the Chiefs, right? So, yeah, I mean, I think that if you take away Kansas City, you take away Patrick Mahomes. Sure, I think Buffalo could have a Super Bowl. And I only say that because I think we're being a little unfair. I think the general public's being a little unfair to Buffalo. Um, I think Buffalo is just a really, really, really good team. Um, and and like, and and overreactions are like, uh, does does Sean McDermott need to go in Buffalo? Like, what are you talking about? Like, look at what they've done. Look at the development of Josh Allen. Are you insane? Like, what? Why would like? Why is that even being considered as a thing? Because they haven't been able to win a Super Bowl hello the Chiefs are in a dynasty like this is an unbelievable football team that it unfortunately for you is right there and now Joe Burrow has entered the equation like the AFC is just absolutely ridiculous right now like it's you, you don't 
this Super Bowl or bust mentality sometimes, like especially for a young team like Buffalo, like the Jets are, are different because they're putting all their eggs in that basket. But to talk about like blowing it up in Buffalo because they haven't won a Super Bowl yet, that's nuts. That's crazy talk. Yeah, I just know that there are a handful of quarterbacks out there that, you know, when, when they are determined, you know, like chip on their shoulder, they're going to go and get it done, and they do. There's only a handful of them that I can think of. Tom Brady is clearly one of them. Patrick Mahomes has been one of them. Petty Patrick, that's why they've called him that. And then Aaron Rodgers is another one. And so, you know, there, there have been so many conversations. And I'm not an Aaron Rodgers fan. I'll be the first one to tell you that. I think he's a jerk, uh, not, a, not a huge fan of his. But that being said, he's a guy that when, when everybody bets against him or they feel like you know he's lost his step or he can't get it done or whatever, he will take that personally and he will go out and try to prove you wrong at every step of the way. And so you know this, this whole stint with the Jets, it could very easily be a revenge tour for Aaron Rodgers. And so um, yeah, I, I, that's why I like them against the Bills. It's not a knock. On Buffalo, it's not me saying that Buffalo has gotten worse by any means. It's just that the Jets have elevated themselves uh, quite a bit with the addition of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I uh, okay. Yeah, I just I just want to make it's a Rodgers thing, not a Buffalo thing. Like if it's not a knock on Buffalo, then not then a, I, not I can, a knock on. Buffalo. I can get on. Yeah. I can get on board with that. I do think people have vastly overreacted to Buffalo not winning a Super Bowl yet. Like it, that. That's just. And and I get it because there is this like creeping fear that it's never going to happen, right? Like it, they won't be able to get it done. But just like the Chiefs had that too for a while, and and they did get it done. And and granted, it's Patrick Mahomes and Alex Smith, and I and I understand that. But just don't 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 totally give up. It's it's the NFL is the only sport I think we do this with Tommy, where it's like people feel like like we have no chance to win a Super Bowl now because they can't quite get over the edge. I don't think that's the case for Buffalo by any means at all. And we're not doing that with Cincinnati, right? We're not doing that with the Chargers. We're just doing it with Buffalo. I don't think Buffalo is better than both of those teams on paper, but here we are. I don't know. I, I think they're fine. I think don't don't panic. But if, if you're that high on the Jets, that's a different story. And I'm high on the Jets too. I think we may be higher than most of what I've seen in the last couple of weeks. I, I think Rodgers is going to be really good. I think they're going to be really good. 869-1240 is the number to call here on Sports Daily. Open for your calls to the IHOP hotline, 869-1240. Let's, uh, let's give you another pair of Fast X tickets here. Town West, 7 o'clock, IHOP hotline, 869-1240. Jad will get us some winners. We'll come back. More Sports Daily coming for you right after this. Welcome back, everybody. Sports Daily on KFH. Jacob Albrock, Tommy Caster with you here on this edition of Sports Daily. It's a Friday edition. You know, Tommy, I, I went and looked as we were talking about that, and it just it had me interested. It piqued my interest on opening week lines in the NFL. Uh, the Jets one-and-a-half-point dogs at home there over at BetMGM. So then I started looking around like, oh, boy, what could we – like what could, what advantages right now can we take on the NFL week one and some bets? Like how can we bet this? Uh, which uh, it would be an interesting exercise. I wonder how much these will move. Uh, the Chiefs seven point favorites at home against the Dolphins in week one. That feels a little low to me. Um, that feels a little low to me. I, I think I'd, I think I'd probably hammer the Chiefs on that as of right now. I think so, too. I mean, I think that you know, clearly the Lions are better than they have been, you know, for a long time. But the Chiefs are more than seven points better than Detroit is. Uh, and it's opening night. You know, it's it's in the home, NFL. It's the not NFL many kickoff. teams are ever more than seven points better. Remember how many well, times the, the Chiefs, Chiefs are didn't cover the last year? That. I know the Chiefs but were man. a brutal covering team last year. I know. But I think I would still take them to cover, though. I would take them to cover as of now. I got to think about that. Um, it, the, the Bengals two and a half point favorites on the road at Cleveland. That might be my favorite of all the bets that are out there, uh, right now and available to us. 
I, I love that. I think I just don't I'm not in on Cleveland at all. Like I don't buy it. I don't believe in it. I don't think Deshaun Watson's gonna be very good there. I mean, maybe I'm wrong about that, but there there are some times where Cleveland, which they get overhyped all the time where I'm in on it. I'm not in on them even a little bit, Tommy. I don't think they're gonna be good. No, and there was only a small sample size of Deshaun Watson in Cleveland towards the end of the season. And I, I kept thinking, you know, when he came back, all right, he's just rusty. You know, he'll work out the kinks or whatever. And um, never really happened. And, and so I don't know if it will. I, I honestly don't know. He was away from the game for so long. I don't know if he'll work out the kinks or if uh, that's just the way that Deshaun Watson's going to play from now on. Here's the other one I like the most. And I hate saying it because it makes my skin crawl. The Eagles are four and a half point road favorites at New England. New England just feels like a hot steaming mess right now. And I don't care who their quarterback is. Philadelphia is going to get after the quarterback this year. That feels like a hammer spot to me too with the Eagles. Uh, I, I just, I don't, I don't see it at all there that that game stays very close. I don't know if there was a team in the NFL that had a better draft than the Eagles by drafting players that are NFL week one ready to play. Right. Like there were several of them that the Eagles drafted. And so um, I think that we'll see some really high impact rookies right away making impact, uh, making an impact for the Eagles. So I like that one, too. Uh, let's while we're on BetMGM, we've got the Nerfy promo bet today. Um, you know, I. The Nerfy promo bet. So when I when I look at these, Tommy, as we talk about, in, and I'm not a, like a Nerfy Yerfy, and that's just no runs in the in the first inning or yes runs in the first inning, basically. I all I do, and there's probably better research than this. I just go to to pitching matchups, right? And like, what's the best pitching matchup of the day? Like, where are the two best starters starting collectively today? And I sort of go at it that way. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. I got to tell you, there aren't that to, to me, like there's not a great collection of starters on paper. The best right now is Cubs twins, Drew Smiley and Sonny Gray. But I don't feel like tremendously confident in that. Right. I, I don't I don't have one that's just jumping off the screen at me. The only one that's relatively I mean, if you went by run total, Tommy, it's Reds Marlins is at seven and a half, but it's a rookie who I, I think is a great rookie, but a rookie starting making his first ever start for Miami. That's the lowest run total. I got to really study this. I don't, I don't think there's any of them that just jump off the screen and scream at me this, this, uh, this week on these Friday matchups. I would take, and this one's not even great either, but the Mets and the Nationals, you've that got was the, that's me too. I'm with Tyler you on that. McGill. Like yep, that one's that's, okay, but yep. really other than that, there's not a whole lot of big high profile pitching matchups tonight. And that's more right. And I think you're with me on this, that Gore's pretty good, right? He's okay. And then it's the nationals offense against anybody really. Right. I, I think we probably share a brain there. I'm going to have to do a little more research. I, I wish I had one to throw at everybody just right off the top of my head, but it's not there this week. That's going to be one to study up on. Um, all right, Tommy, let's let's move elsewhere in the sports world. I I <laughs> this schedule thing in the NFL, like it, it is a big deal. I, I don't know. We've got a Christmas triple header again. The Chiefs are the you know, the Chiefs are the headline. The Bears are getting a little run. The Bears and Packers um have been a Christmas Day game. They're not this year. You get Ravens 49ers Giants Eagles those are that's a pretty good Christmas triple header um but I I don't know like who's the next best team in the NFL this year it's obviously the Chiefs at putting in these profile games high profile games I think Ravens Niners is pretty predictive on who might be there late but who is the other is it the Eagles like have the Eagles entered that status like if you're looking for the team that you want to see in prime time the most or, or or high profile the most it's the chiefs but who do you think is the collective most interesting remaining team outside of kansas city in the nfl i don't know that it, it was buffalo before i don't know that that's the case is cincinnati enough there yet i think the eagles are in that conversation for sure 
Uh, I don't think the Niners are because we never know who their quarterback's going to be. I don't know that there's an obvious answer here. Is it the Jets this year? I, Probably I mean, the but Jets. There's, but there's risk in the Jets, right? It could not work like that. I, I think that that's. I think that's absolutely possible that but it come doesn't on. work. Either way, you're going to be tuning in. Whether it no. works or not, you're going to be watching it. And not in the, week the sixteen public. if they're if they're six sure. and ten. If they're six and ten going are. into week seventeen, I'm not that interested in them. Absolutely, like, you are because of the I, fact that the the Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers experiment is either working or it's not. But one way or another, you're paying attention to it. But, like, I see, to me, they're not safe. Like, who's the safe team? I, I think it might be the Eagles. As weird as the NFC East has been historically, in that teams don't do it two years in a row out of the NFC East, or what are we going on, two decades now? I, I'm starting to think the Eagles are maybe the next safest team. What about the Ravens now that Lamar Jackson is there? Like, the Ravens are always good. I just don't know who it is. The Chargers have let us down too much. I think it could be the Bengals, but you remember the start the Bengals got off to last year where we were all scratching our heads a little bit? I just don't know who that other team is. Like, who who else are you going to put in there? I think the Chiefs are way ahead of the field in that regard. Like, the highest floor by far in the NFL exists in Kansas City. You're never going to make a mistake with Mahomes and the Chiefs being in a primetime slot. I think it's the Eagles. I think the Eagles are the next safest team right now in the NFL to schedule late season prime time. I mean, they can flex out, but I'm just saying because the schedule came out, I think it's the Eagles. I, I think that they're there as, you know, a team that because they made the Super Bowl appearance, uh, th- there's it's going to be in- intrigue around them, right? Well, I mean, the Jalen Hurts contract is there. You know, Nick Sirianni is a, a good coach and, and, a, and a fun character. And then they've got all of the, the supporting pieces you know, around on in different positions on both sides of the ball. So, yeah, I mean, I think that it's safe to say that, you know, the Eagles have entered that top echelon, um, you know, to be able to stay locked in on throughout the course of the season. Um, but I'm still going to give the nod to the Jets outside of Kansas City. All right. Uh, I, yeah, I, I want it to be the Jets. I really do. 869-1240, the IHOP hotline. All right, what's the latest on KU recruiting, Tommy? Is anything out there right now? Yeah, so the only thing that uh, I know of today, obviously, Mackenzie Mbako is the the big target for the Jayhawks. Uh, Mbako posted on Instagram, I believe it was late last night or early this morning, one of the two, uh, with a timer, one of those timers that he put on his Instagram story, counting it down to five o'clock this afternoon. So, uh, oh, barring some make kind us of wait leak, that long, yeah, some kind of leak or something ahead of time, bar you know, barring that. Uh, we'll have an announcement, it looks like, from Mbako between uh, Kansas and Indiana at 5 o'clock today. And was it you that sent me something from Hunter Dickinson? Like, do we need to be paying attention to something Hunter Dickinson tweeted, like a radar with a flight thing? Is that is that something that means something? I, I Am I missing that? I, I mean, I would imagine that it has something to do with Mbako, right? I mean, like, he's the, the highest recruit, you know, left out there. That would be, yeah. that'd be my thought. I don't know. I don't have any other... See, so I, I thought about like. this, and uh, and just like it came full circle on this yesterday. I think the fact that we saw Ernest Dude transfer out really, really makes me think that Mbako's coming to Kansas. I I don't know why else Ude would have done that with that timing, unless he had some feel and indication that Mbako was going to come in. I but the only thing is I like, don't know if that's a correlation. They weren't though, competing to be honest with, with each other. But why would Ude? At the, like the timing on it is is very curious to me. I think the timing on it, in my mind, comes from the fact that you know you, you're waiting for Dickinson to commit, and then after that, maybe there was an indication given to him just recently that Dickinson's commitment was more for more than just one year. That would be my correlation as to why Uday transferred maybe. out when he did. But, and the reason why I don't think Mbako has really any correlation is because they don't play the same position. You know, Mbako is a wing, know. could maybe play the four. Uday is a straight up five. I get it. And I started in the same place. I just, it's the timing of it that makes me think that he thinks he could get back. Because even if, it, like, even if they're not at the same position, you know, the rotation will be what the rotation is. I, I don't know. I mean, well, you know, here's the other possibility, too, is that 
Ernest Uday saw what Hunter Dickinson basically got on the open market and was like, well, maybe I can go get something on the yeah. open market and find minutes. And I, and I don't know. I mean, he's a big-time prospect, so he was probably just fine at Kansas in that regard. But when you see what Hunter Dickinson was able to do based on production, it is logical to me to think about production being a big part of what you need to do, and he needs minutes. I'm just telling you, I've had this like thought in the back of my skull that that should that, that should be some indicator that Mbako's coming to Kansas. I, I I don't know why, but yesterday like that has just been itching at me. Is that with Uday leaving, I just I really think Mbako's coming into Kansas, and that is based on absolutely nothing. By the way, like I don't have anybody telling me that or anything like right. that. I'm just I have this feeling. Well, basically every single recruiting insider that follows that they've all suggested that Mbako is bound for Kansas. Now, who knows? I mean, there could be a late push from Indiana. There could be a late NIL push or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Um, but all indications as of right now, as it stands is that he will commit to the Jayhawks, but we'll have to wait till five o'clock to find out. Here's the other one that I have for you as it pertains before we take a break to Mbako. If he, if he does come, does that tell us anything about Kevin McCuller, right? Like Because remember, yeah, Kevin McCuller— McCuller's not coming back. He's well, self, back. self hinted at it, and you know what Dickinson was just able to, to do. I don't think McCuller's like a draft pick. So, you know, if that's what Dickinson's worth, I don't think that's what McCuller would be worth, but he'd be worth a lot, I would think, but— do they recruit Mbako if McCullough and they, they have room for both of them, but like, does Mbako come if he thinks McCullough's coming and like how much hand in hand is there involved with all of this? I, I don't know. Like it's so hard now in this to when you're a team like Kansas, who's at the top of it to, to sort of see what one thing means for the other. Kansas is going to be good next year either way. But I ask you, I say all of that to ask you this. If you have for next year only, your perfect case scenario, if you could have Mbako or McCuller who, at, at that three spot, if that's what we assume where he'd be, who would you rather have? For next year only? For next year. To win a national championship. Probably McCuller only because he's a veteran, you know, and he's he's been there before. Um, I think Mbako has a much higher upside, for sure, long term, sure. more than yeah. just next season. But if you're giving me yep. next season only, it's McCuller. It's not going to happen, though. I know Bill Self hinted that he would like McCuller back. McCuller's not coming back, though. But how do you balance that? Let's let's say Bill Self has to make that decision. And I'm not saying he does. I don't think he does either. But, like, how do you balance that? Do you take the top 10 five-star player who's going to make the program good for a long time? Or do you bring in McCuller who could really help you win a natty? Like, I, I love the I, – I, I know that bothers some people. To me, it's fascinating. Like, I, I can't – like, th- to add that wrinkle to what they already have to do and, like, now that it's, like, roster management is just wild to me to think about it. 869-1240 is the number to call. We'll come back more sports daily as we make our way through a Friday. We'll get you prepped for a busy weekend on the Diamond next. We made USAA insurance for veterans like James. When he found out how much USAA was helping members save, he said, It's time to switch. We'll help you find the right coverage at the right price. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. Restrictions apply. All right, welcome back, everybody. Sports Daily on KFH. Tommy, we've got Wichita State softball. In the AAC semifinals today, it uh, starts at 11 o'clock, actually, right when we get off the air here. They'll take on Tulsa. I don't envision anything crazy coming from Tulsa, a team they've played very well over the years. Uh, we've, you know, we've talked at length here about what's at stake. We don't know if they'll be able to host a regional. We do know winning this tournament is critical for those chances, if they still even exist. Um Obviously, they want to win the conference tournament anyway. I just wonder this year whether they host or not. It feel it does feel a little bit different to me in their chances of making a run in the postseason because I think they've got some 
pretty good pitching this year. And I, I'm curious. We've we've spent all our time really thinking about like hosting that regional and probably not enough time talking about how deep a run could they make because they've already beaten Arkansas and Oklahoma State. So unless they ended up at OU again, which would be just tragic if that were to happen, I think they have a chance, as long as it's not Oklahoma, to advance out of a regional this year and on to super regionals. Yeah, but don't you think, though, that the odds are significantly better if they get to host the regional to be able to make it out of the regional, right? I mean, like, I don't know what the odds are nationwide on, you know, regional hosted teams making it out of the regional that they're hosting versus when you're going somewhere. Um, I don't know what that looks like, the all-time records on that, but you would you would think that they would have a much better chance advancing out of a regional that they're hosting rather than going on the road. So um, I think you have to treat this conference tournament as a must-win. Uh, they want to win it, like you said, regardless if they're hosting a regional or not. Uh, but each game, as they make their way through the tournament, uh, they've got to look at it as one step closer to potentially hosting that regional where Kevin Saul mentioned it on Wednesday – Really, in their minds, the only way that they'll even have a shot to do that is by winning the conference tournament. Well, yeah, they got to do that. I mean, like, they have to. I, I get it. I, I just, even if they don't, like, because they're— I like the their chances, is, obviously, better to advance out of a regional if they're hosting it. I do, too. That's not what I mean. I'm saying just in general, no matter where they play, right, as long as it's not in Norman I, I, with Oklahoma— I think their chances of getting through any regional, whether it's in Wichita or, you know, Fayetteville or Stillwater, are pretty good. And how could you not think that they beat those teams this year? I mean, if they are not here, I think they're going to be at one of those two places, I think. So, I mean, I, I, I like their chances to do that. Sure. And look, they're a talented enough team that, you know, you put them up against anyone at any time at any place i'm sure that that's their mentality we'll play them we'll beat them we'll move on right and and this is a team that has the talent not only hitting which they've had that talent for a number of years now but now with pitching they've added that other element where they've got some really dominant pitchers like alex aguilar who uh, was rookie of the year i think in in or freshman of the year whatever that award was from the conference uh which is outstanding they've got that pitching now where you know i'm sure that they do think that they could go to whatever regional they're placed in if they're not hosting and have a a chance to advance out um so it's there, and that's the mentality that they have to have, regardless of what the committee decides to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think that's, I think that's fair for baseball. It is pretty simple, by the way we understand it, right? They got to win the conference tournament if they're going to play in the postseason, and then it becomes, you know, can they? The regular season matters because they still have a chance to win the regular season championship, obviously, and that's certainly important to the team, right? But, you know, you get that series starting today against South Florida. By the way, you'll hear game one right here on KFH. You'll hear all the games right here on KFH. You want to still win the league. I don't know the likelihood of that now because you've got to chase back down East Carolina. But it's postseason or bust, and, and sort of the same thing then. Do they have a chance to win the conference tournament? They can pitch. I, they they beat the top dogs, East Carolina. They swept them. Uh, yeah, the, the Shocker baseball squad that we saw in April absolutely has a chance to win the conference tournament. Not the squad that we've seen the last couple of weeks. That's the big question. That's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. All right, we'll tell you about that series, what else is coming for us here on KFH today. We'll put a bow on it. What's on tap? It's all coming as we wrap Sports Daily 